Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be returning to Rule the Waves. Uh, we are playing as Japan, uh, the Empire of Japan. It is January of 1913, so we're a little bit more than halfway through the game. Um, actually, just shy of halfway through the game, since it goes through the end of 1925. And so far we fought a couple of wars. We haven't won too much in the way of territory. Uh, we did uh, have a random event that allowed us to take Angola. Uh, but outside of that, whoops, outside of that, we really haven't expanded the Japanese Empire despite several conflicts. The Navy's actually in a, a dangerous situation right now where uh, our battleship fleet, we've been downsizing to save money, so it's by far the smallest of the obsolete battleships. In terms of our dreadnought fleet, it's far too small. We can see that Germany has three built and three more that they're building, so they're going to have six plus two battle cruisers and another one building so they're on their way to having nine battleships or battle cruisers against our our four uh britain is on pace to have eight against our four uh i can't do math actually they're on pace to have 10 against our four france is on pace to have six russia's on pace to have six the u.s is on pace to have eight and italy is on pace to have uh, seven. So you can see here we're definitely trailing in terms of the dreadnought race. Um, we haven't built any actual dreadnoughts yet, just battle cruisers. Our cruiser fleet is far too small and also somewhat obsolete. Our light cruiser fleet is dramatically too small, although more modern, and our destroyer fleet is far too small. So when it comes to all those different factors, we're not doing great. Um, with that being said, we have by far the smallest naval budget. Um, actually, Probably should open that almanac back up. You can see here our naval budget is over 80,000 smaller than the next closest. Actually, no, we have a bigger one than Italy. Um, for now, anyway. Tensions are pretty low at the moment. There's uh, no real country that we're at risk of going to war with, and that's driving the naval budget down. Um, and we actually have a monthly uh, deficit of 2.8 million, so that could be uh, problematic because that's only about, what, five months worth, a little bit less, uh, of, uh, of revenue. Uh, fortunately, we have some ships coming off the ways in the next few months that'll help to balance things out, but still, um, we're not in the greatest financial shape. So, we really can't afford to design a new ship or build anything new at the moment. Um, as far as our ships are concerned, 14-inch uh, guns are the biggest we can design right now, and um, we've re researched a lot of technologies that would allow us to build a pretty nice uh, battleship, uh, but thus far haven't been able to. I will probably design my own uh, battleship uh, that I'll build domestically in Japan, um, but at the moment we don't have the cash to do that. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump ahead to the next month. Okay, so we can add one month of uh, construction to the battlecruiser Ibuki if we add a new fire control, which we just researched. So basically it'll lengthen the design time, but it'll make sure that the ship has the most modern equipment, which we went ahead and did. Uh, German government's offering to si sell us a Q ship, which is basically a merchant ship that kind of is hidden and disguised as a merchant uh, that then is able to kind of drop its shields and have guns. It's useful for fighting against submarines uh, or merchant raiders as well. Uh, but we just don't have the additional cash right now to, to buy. So again, situation didn't really change here at all. Uh, we did have our monthly balance uh, improve slightly uh, after that last month. It looks like our budget went up just a little bit. Uh, but again, uh, we don't have any spare cash. We need to keep this money here until some of those under construction ships are finished. The German government is interested in buying the rights to increased oblique penetration ability for $4.3 million. Um... I don't know if we want to sell this to a potential enemy. We have fought the Germans in a war recently, uh, but at the same time, that would be really useful money. We could even use it to design a new ship. Mm, no, we're going to... I don't want to... Not. Let's see, what are our tensions? German tensions are pretty good, so I guess we could do that. So you can see there it boosted our, our revenue. Now we're not going to build anything quite yet. I'd like for some of those other ships to be completed. So there you can see uh, destroyers commissioned into the Navy. And our budget improved slightly. We'll go ahead and jump one more turn. We got another destroyer, another destroyer, another destroyer. So several destroyers all just uh, increased, uh, all completed. 
Prime Minister wants to reduce finance for the Navy to build a new palace and a luxurious yacht for the head of state. What do you do? Uh, protest energetically, enlist the help of the Navy League to delay the plans for a palace. Or, of course, the Navy will be happy. We're not going to... That prestige. Prestige is basically the goal of, of the game, is to gain as much prestige as possible. But we really don't want to lose out on our naval budget. So I'm thinking we'll enlist the Navy League, and that'll increase tensions, but I'm okay with that. You know, tensions are low as they are. There we go, secondary turrets on BBs, secondary gun turrets, nice. Okay, so you can see the budget is improving pretty substantially now. Um, only 1.3 million in the red, and as you can see, we've got several more ships completing in the next month or two. So we'll go ahead and we'll let those finish. I'd like to try and break even before we through another ship under construction. Stereoscopic rangefinder. That seems to be a reasonable price. So we just basically gave away the money that we got for selling that item, but at the same time, I think that's a useful item to have. You know, the better the rangefinders we have, the better gun control we'll have. And... Total battleship tonnage and building. So our prestige drops because we've got the lowest battleship numbers. Uh, we've got two more that are about to complete. You can see here we've got, we're going to have four. Looks like the rest of the nation's uh, construction remains pretty consistent, but basically political pressure is going to force us into designing a battleship here before too long. You can see our monthly balance is now in the positives, so we could go ahead and order some new ships. Um, Yuzumi class, when was that designed? Are these the first of the Yuzumi? Did I design these last round? Yeah, so these are brand new ships. Four light cruisers under construction. They're 1.2 million a month. Those are expensive light cruisers. Hmm. Well, we've got one battle cruiser coming off the ways in two months, so let's go ahead and wait two more months, and um, hmm. The Italian government's willing to sell us some pretty high-quality three-inch guns, but we don't. I'm not really too worried about small guns like a three-inch gun. Then this. So a scandal with Russia. Let's embarrass Russia, because that's always fun to do. Okay, so with the completion or the commissioning of that last battle cruiser, we've still got one more under construction for another 14 months, our slipways are almost all empty. Unrest level is one. I believe that's because we haven't been building enough battleships, but now we've got a healthy monthly balance here at this point to go ahead and design a new warship. So at this point, based on the fact that we're losing a lot of prestige uh, for not having enough battleships, I think what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and design a new battleship. I was looking at doing some cruiser work, but frankly, uh, we just need a new battleship at this point. We're losing too much prestige. So we're going to go on, we're going to desi design a ship, design a new battleship. It'll be a dreadnought, and we'll want to build it in a local yard. We now have the ability to build a ship up to 30,000 tons, so that gives us a lot more uh, flexibility uh, in terms of building domestically. We also have the ability to build triple turreted main guns on our battleship. Um, so again, uh, we have a lot more um, capability in terms of building domestically now that we have those 30,000 ton shipways that we can build ships of 30,000 tons. And again, the triple turrets means we can have a conventional sort of a Iowa class or a North Carolina class design where you've got triple turrets, but actually even more guns. We could have 12 uh, main guns of uh, 13 or 14 inches, actually, um, depending on what we want to do. 14 inches, or we'll see. Well, 
we'd have to increase the size, but I, I wouldn't really care if we increased it to the max, 30,000 tons. Real quick here, let's take a look at the guns and see what uh, the better gun is. Now the one negative thing is these 13 and 14 inch guns have a negative one quality, so they're not great in terms of 13 or 14 inch guns. But if you look at the penetration values here, max range of 18,600 for the 14 inch gun, 13 inch gun is 17,800. The higher quality 8, 12 inch gun has 18,000. So it, actually the 12 inch gun outranges both of these in terms of max range uh, because of the quality. When it comes to the max range of 15,000, well not max, but the max penetration value we have is 15,000 yards for the 14 inch gun comes with side penetration of almost 12 inches and uh, deck penetration of 2.2. We compare that to the 12 inch gun, far superior penetration characteristics than, than the 12 or the 13 inch gun at max range. If we look at kind of sliding the scale down uh, to 12,000, still superior, 8 and 5. And actually superior in every regards to uh, the 12 inch gun, despite the 12 inch gun having a better quality gun, the additional size of the 14 incher gives it substantial advantages and it's better than the uh, similar quality 13 inch gun as well. So with all that being said, uh, let's go ahead and design a battleship. Um, it's going to have 12 guns. We're, I don't see why we wouldn't make them 14 inch caliber. Um, Make 14 inch caliber, let's auto design ship. So, why aren't these triple turrets? Huh. Ship is slow. Is it too much weight? Well, if we have a medium range, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to up the uh, size of the ship to 30,000. So, it's going to be exactly at our maximum 30,000 tons. We'll have medium range. I'd like to make it a little bit faster. I'd like 22, 22 knots would be nice. Um, although, to be fair, the battleships of this era, like the World War II U.S. battleships that were hit at Pearl Harbor, which are really designed in World War I, I think they had like a 20 knot or a 19 knot uh, speed. They were They were fairly slow. You didn't really see the fast battleships in the U.S. start coming online. Um, I don't think it was till the North Carolina class. Those were the first, like, 30 knotters. The Japanese had fast battleships with the Congo class, but that was really more of a battle cruiser. Um, I think the Naga was fast as well, which was kind of an interwar class with 16-inch guns. Um, we could sacrifice on protection, or we could go with slower speed. Hmm. I'd also like to have these be triple turrets if we can. So we've got an aft and we've got a forward. We'll have aft superimposed triple and forward superimposed triple. So there we go. It's not big enough to house this and basically no secondary guns either. Huh. I suppose we could go with double turrets. A double turret would be kind of more in line with like the Queen Elizabeth class, or most most battleships of this era didn't have triple turrets. They had double turrets. Even in the U.S., they didn't have them really common with triple turrets until uh, the Colorado class, I believe it was, which was kind of a I think that was an interwar or late World War One design. Um. Superimposed. And superimposed. So if we go that route, we still have quite a bit of uh, weight left over. We could use it to make the ship a little bit faster. Better belt armor, too. So really strong turret armor and conning tower armor. We're going to leave that all pretty much in place. But then we go ahead and we buff up the belt armor to 12 inches and the deck armor to 3. 3-inch three deck armor is pretty heavy, as you can see from our 
uh, deck penetration at long range, uh, a big gun won't do that unless they've got a really high quality gun that maybe we don't have any intel on. I see no reason to waste weight on torpedo tube mounts with battleships. So we're not going to do that. We've got 20 uh, secondary 4-inch guns in casemates. I almost would rather go with like 16 in single turrets. But I don't know what that what the weight implications. Costs us a little bit of weight, but I'm okay with that. Uh, rate of fire for secondary guns reduced by 20% due to accurate, accurate training. Elevation gear for secondary turrets. Um, what about torpedo protection? Okay, so mainly rate of fire on our secondary turrets. But I'd rather have them in turrets because, again, in, in a turret situation, at least you can... Um, protect against, you know, bad C. If you have them in casemates and you've got bad Cs, then you could end up um, not being able to use those guns and torpedo, you know, craft could close in on you. Um, still have 400 tons. What if we change that to a triple? Nope. It was a lot of weight there. I suppose we could go with triple turrets if they were 13-inch guns, but I'd rather have 14. Um, okay, so we've got eight 14-inch guns on this battleship. This is a very traditional battleship design. Very heavy armor, decent speed at 21 knots. We could bump it to 22. This would almost be like a battle cruiser. Um, I wonder if we put them in casemates. We've still got some weight there. Accommodations are normal. Ninety-five guns for the main gun, which should be more than sufficient. I think most ships of this era only had about seventy-five guns. Well, Twelve three-inch guns in casemates, and then we've got sixteen four-inch guns in secondary turrets. So we've got a very strong secondary gun armament. Right at the max of thirty thousand tons. We'll call this the Gamer Class, because I think this will be one of my, kind of the anchor of my fleet. And also I think the 3-inch guns, the 12 3-inch guns and casemates help to offset the fire rate penalty that we have in our double 4-inch turrets. I'm kind of envisioning something like the 5-inch turrets that the U.S. World War II battleships had. Um, okay, so I think that's going to do it. We'll go ahead and save this ship. I know I'm breaking kind of tradition and, and naming it after my, my YouTube channel. Looks like it's going to cost about $3.2 per ship per month. We can afford that right now. So we'll go ahead and lay one down right away. We're going to call this, we'll call the first ship of the class the Gamer. And it'll cost six million dollars for development of the class. Take 31 months. This is going to be a long development for this, this warship, but hopefully it'll appease the population a bit. And uh, maybe once these other cruisers come online, then we can start looking at developing some new cruisers. So, right-wing politicians saying our navy's pathetically weak in terms of battleships. The U.S. government's offering to sell us medium-range submarine for $4.3 million. We have no need for the ramshackle inventions. Armor development improved. Armor bracing right as I finish designing that battleship. New armor. Great. Um, go through November. Deny involvement. Prestige. Make the agent a national hero. Prestige intention. Yeah. Subdivision of damage control. All these inventions, like right after we just built a, a new battleship. 
It'll jump through December. And now we got a bigger bigger dock as well. Um, the Italian government is interested in buying the rights to TNT Bursting Charge. I actually like the Italians. I kind of feel like they should be our allies. So we'll go ahead and buy all means and give them that. Okay, so we now have a bit more money to play with. You can see we've got almost nothing under construction. If we compare that to the rest of the world, no one's building heavy cruisers right now. Uh, battle cruisers have pretty much replaced them. Um, no one is building light cruisers. There's very few light cruisers under construction. Same for destroyers right now. So it seems like the bulk of the world is focused heavily in building their battleships, which means we could follow suit or we could try and build a balanced fleet. Now, I think my intention is going to be build slightly more balanced fleets, uh, but we also need to you know, remember the political constraints of uh, the demands that people have on us to, to build battleships. So what I'll probably do is next turn, I may design a new light cruiser fleet. And actually, what we'll do here as well, um, because we've launched four battle cruisers that largely make the light cruisers obsolete. Well, here's the thing: is I could scrap these guys, but even if I scrap all of these heavy cruisers, it's what, like, less than two hundred thousand, or right around two hundred thousand in terms of money that we'll save per month. It's not terribly. It's not a lot. Um. Let's see here. Do we have any active fleet? Yeah, we've got two modern heavy cruisers. I still think they could serve a use as, like, coastal defense ships. Err. I'm not sure. These were rebuilt in about ten years ago. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. We've got three battle cruisers in service now. That actually ties us with the most of everybody else. The only problem is everybody else has... Well, not everybody else, but several other nations have three battleships in service as well, and we just laid our first down. Um, I think it'll make more sense to start scrapping some of the battleships soon as well. Uh, we do have... Looks like all of our battle... No, we've got two battleships that are in mothballs. Um, of the Mikasa class. Also... Got two newer battleships. Those guys will stay in service for sure. I don't know, it just seems silly to, to downsize our fleet so much and lose all those ships. But again, capability is more important. I suppose you could say the same thing with like the U.S. fleet now compared to World War II. U.S. fleet now is way more powerful despite far fewer ships. But anyway, um, I hope this video wasn't too boring. It was just kind of rambling through. I didn't really have an agenda. I was kind of thinking about discussing politics, but I didn't want to... I know some of you have complained when I've done that. I've only really done that once or twice, so maybe I'll make a standalone video for that. Just trying to get myself back into Rule the Waves. Um, again, probably one of my less energetic videos, but I appreciate you guys tuning with us. We chugged through another year, and um, I'll definitely make sure next time around in a couple of days I'll have an agenda uh, on tap. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate you tuning in for this video, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.